welcome to another instant reaction episode in the movie buffs podcast my name is tyler and i did it i finally saw the super mario bros movie now this one i had planned to actually see it a few weeks ago and was planning on doing one movie friday one movie saturday and just completely dropped the super mario bros i don't know if it was because i had heard some negative feedback some criticism of Chris Pratt's, Chris Pratt's, there we go, Chris Pratt's accent in the movie. And I don't know if that was why. I don't know if it was because I had already seen the score, uh, the Rotten Tomatoes score. I'm not sure what uh, what made me drop it. Uh, I feel like I do have some type of nostalgia when it comes to Super Mario Bros. But uh, finally did it, finally saw it. But before we get to the instant reaction, spoiler free, instant reaction want to make sure i talk about time to train fitness if you are a fan of this podcast it usually starts with a promotion for time to train fitness now that is my free youtube workout channel we have cycling bar hit cardio or dumbbell workouts the last two the latter are with me and it's 100 percent free 100 percent free in the description you're going to find a link for time to train fitness subscribe check it out See if you can work it into your schedule. And remember, free, join the community, start working out, and do it from your own home. So let's get back to now the episode here, the Super Mario Bros. Now, of course, I played Mario Kart, thoroughly enjoyed it as a kid, as a teen. Could probably still work it a little bit if I had an N64. But I've seen the 93 version, the Super Mario Bros with John Leguizamo. And what was funny was I actually recently watched this YouTube breakdown. I don't know if you've ever seen any of these. They're with either Vanity Fair or other companies where they take the actor and they go through different movies in their filmography and they talk about some insight to it, why they do it, what if they enjoyed it, what they learned, stuff like that. And he was actually talking about that. And he was saying, John Leguizamo, I'm talking about, he was saying how this version was actually a lot darker than what actually came out and the studio came in and like changed a lot of stuff. And with that version, he mentioned like there's a scene in a club and originally they had a bunch of strippers from the area that were paid to be there. And they then radically changed that scene seeing that it was Super Mario Brothers that they changed that scene and I think they either closed them or they didn't use any of those scenes to make sure that they could release it and kids could watch it. But with this version, the 2023 version, the Super Mario Bros, some interesting stuff has happened. Now, just recently, and at the time I'm filming this, it's a Tuesday, and I watched it on a Friday, and on Saturday came out that the movie already crossed the billion mark. So I believe it's the first billion movie of the year. And it's the 11th animated movie to ever reach that mark. Thinking about it, I just think that, I mean, it appeals to different audiences, multiple audiences. Now, if you are an older or if you are an adult or even an older adult, you probably played it in younger years or even when like Nintendo first started coming out, Super Mario Bros. And then all the different variations of the game, there's that. But then with kids, younger kids, teens, younger kids, there are elements of it that appeal to them. And so I think that that really plays into it. That's my opinion on how it crossed the billion dollar mark because I'm a little surprised in its success at the box office. And I'm going to get to some of this stuff with in terms of the movie, things that um, I thought were done poorly. And of course, I'm going to beat around the bush on a lot of these because this is spoiler free. But I already mentioned, I heard the criticism regarding Chris Pratt's accent in the movie. And I mean, the fact that I think also Charlie Day, I don't think either of them are Italian. I feel like that was some of the criticism that came out before. So those things leading up to the movie, of course, they are in my head, but it wasn't the they weren't things that I felt like I was stuck on, like, oh, this accent, why isn't he using this? And they, I feel like they may even make a joke about the accents in the movie. But um, those things leading into it, 
I try to keep an open mind and I'll get to later on with the recommendations. I'm going to talk about cast and crew, give a summary of my walkout reaction. And I believe I'm actually going to give the issues I had. Yep. I'm looking at it right now in terms of what I wrote down. So let's talk first about the cast and crews. Directors, Aaron Hovarth, Michael Jelenic, and Pierre Leduc. These directors, these trio, looks like they did a lot of stuff together with Teens Titans Go. I've never watched that cartoon. I don't know much about it at all. I just know some of the characters, the DC characters, but uh, I don't really, I've never watched it. I don't even know what channel it's on. So that's all I really have to say about that. Writer, Matthew Fogel, he's done things with The Minions, The Rise of Gru, Lego Movie 2, and a, a classic with Big Mama's House, Like Father, Like Son. Of course, I'm joking with that. I didn't see that one. Big Mama's House. Big Mama, I think I think I, I maybe watched that one, but uh, didn't watch the Like Father, Like Son. And then cast here, let's talk about that quickly. Chris Pratt, Mario, Anya Taylor-Joy, big star at the moment, Princess Peach. Charlie Day, he plays Luigi. Jack Black is Bowser. Keegan Michael, Keegan Michael Key. I don't know why that one's always a hard one for, one for me to say. He's Toad, and then Donkey Kong is Seth Rogen. Some of these characters, I mean, if you know who they are going in, you're probably like, is that really their voice? And I'm pretty positive that with Toad and Bowser, they put effects on their voices because if not. That's just really impressive that how they manipulated their voice to have either a high or a low pitch voice like that. And so with the casting of it, I mean, they're big actors, all of them, big actors, Seth Rogen, Jack Black, Charlie Day, Anya Taylor-Joy, all very popular characters. And Chris Pratt is one of the actors still, in my opinion. I think I just saw recently that he has a Garfield movie coming out in the next year or so. So he's staying with the voice acting <laughs> and going to be crushing it, making tons of money, I bet. You heard the promo about Time to Train Fitness and you're thinking, how do I get some dumbbells? There's really only two products that I recommend when it comes to at-home fitness. And one of those are the Core Home Fitness Adjustable Dumbbells. If you're already following the YouTube workouts, these are the dumbbells that I use, me, Tyler, and you've probably seen me adjust them between the weights super fast. Along with adjusting quickly, they go from five pounds to 50 pounds and feel great in the hands. Head to the link in the description and grab yourself a pair. You have the free workouts on YouTube and will now have the dumbbells to help you reach your fitness goals. Let's get to the episode. A quick promo break here in this episode. If you've been a fan of our podcast, you've probably already heard me, Tyler, one of your hosts, talk about the Naboso insoles. If you are ever wondering about, oh, what are insoles? How do they help my feet? Are they really useful? I got to tell you that I've been wearing these duo insoles for probably a year and a half now, and I think they're game changers. If you sit at a desk, if you are on your feet, so basically anybody for <laughs> anybody in the world, they can really help with your health. If you ever have foot pain or if you have any type of issues with your feet, these can be a game changer for you. Hopefully you take my word on it. You head to the link in the description, you buy yourself a pair and you come back and you share it that, oh, I actually bought those insoles and they actually do work. You know, that'd be something that we'd love to hear, love to see, because that means that you're working on your health. That's it for the promo break. Let's get back to the episode. Let me give you now the IMDB summary. And it's a quick one. It's the, this summary. There's always two on IMDb, there's the storyline and the summary. This is the one at the top, and it's usually really quick. So this one says, the story of the Super Mario Bros on their journey through the Mushroom Kingdom. Very basic. <laughs> and I'm going to give you first the walkout reaction because I'm going to go in, in depth on this one. So if you're new to the podcast, the walkout reaction, it's not what it sounds like in terms of walking out like because it's a bad movie, but walking out of the theater. Let's say you're walking back to your car. And these are like your initial thoughts. What did you initially think walking out of the movie? Because as you sit, let it steep in, it, oftentimes your opinion of a movie changes. And so with this one, my initial thought was there's lots of fan payoffs, a lot of fan appreciation, a lot of kit, like kickbacks to the games, to the original uh, source material. And I mean, even with how it's filmed, there's sequence sequences in it 
that look like the the original game. And when you watch it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because early in the movie, there are sequences that look like Super Smash Bros. There's carts in the movie. There's one of the more popular racetracks from the game. There are character finishing moves, lots of scenes that play to the fans. And on the other side of that, what what do you get out of that? Yes, you're excited because you see something that you recognize from when you played a game or or even maybe the original movie, things along that nature. But the flip side of it for me was I kind of wish that there was la- less fan payoff and more story. I, yes, it's fictional. Yes, this is made up. And they could have probably gone a million different ways with it. But I didn't feel like you were invested at all in the story at any point. That's my opinion in it. Uh, of course, I like these characters. I just shared at the beginning how I played the game a lot. And I've seen the original movie. I didn't really play Super Smash Bros. I will admit that. I don't know. I know that my friends growing up, they were really into going over to somebody's house and playing Super Smash Bros. I never really got into that. Uh, but uh, Mario Kart Racing, yeah, all about that. But let me go back to the story of it. I thought there was some really low hanging fruit with the storyline with Mario and Luigi. It starts off kind of talking about them, but it quickly goes in another direction and I'm not the room what direction that is, but that connection between them, the brother relationship, low hanging fruit because they come back to it later on in the movie, but they've already spent the majority of the movie, the overwhelming majority going in a different direction with it. So there was some low hanging fruit with it that probably would have made the audience, I don't know, maybe feel some emotion with that and at any point in the movie. But of course, that's my opinion. Now, my favorite Mar- Mario Kart character wasn't in the movie. Not the biggest issue to me, but I thought that was kind of interesting that they had a lot of characters in it that you're like, oh, wow, like this, this person's in, this person's in, but... They didn't have one of the main ones in my, I think he's a main one. So just opinion on that one. Rolling into now the current scores on IMDb, it has a 7.3 out of 10. And I'm pretty shocked at that, I'll say, because it's it's not the best story. And a 7.3, I think I shared in the last pe- podcast episode that I did, that some good shows that I like have like six in the sixes, 6.8, things along that nature. But looking at the reviews on IMDb, it's pretty consistent with what I'm, I've shared kind of already in this episode. That's just okay. It's fun to watch. All ages are they're probably going to enjoy it, but the story is kind of meh. And so I would say that the score of it might have some influence from some outside sources. That's one of the things that I feel like I'm becoming a conspiracy theorist on that you see these movies with or shows, uh, Night Agent, that have these high scores on AMDB and then you go read the reviews and they're all trashing it or they're all just saying it's pretty it's pretty average, but yet it has such a high score and you're like, why, why does it have a, a good score? And it wouldn't be surprising if a company, a studio, paid for those to boost it up. Just my opinion on that. But Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 59% critic score and 96% audience score. (sighs) Audience score, I I guess when I think about it, when I watched the movie on Saturday, there was people of all ages in it. And I did notice the the, uh, individuals sitting next to me, they were, I think they were older than me, but they were loving it. And if you're all about it, be all about it, I guess. Issues I had with this now. And uh, I'm giving spoiler-free reasons here in terms of I'm not going to really talk about the in-depth versions of it, but I didn't enjoy the Bowser storyline in the movie. And this would be something I'd love to hear what you think about it if you see the movie. It was just a little too much for me. And I can see it was made to be playful and funny, but... To be honest, I totally would have been fine with a, I just want to rule the whole world storyline. And you're going to see what I mean when you watch it. But his, uh, how he's portrayed is just a little too much for me. And right there, 
here's a good example of could have easily spent that time using it with the Mario and Luigi storyline because it's not like Bowser's going to go away. Bowser is he's one of the he is the big bad. He's of course going to show up just like in every comic book movie. The bad guy always comes back. He never dies. Always comes back. Bowser's going to come back. It's even though they forced a V him and then that's not taking anything away that there, he's going to be defeated and he's going to come back. Always happens. And then another issue I had, which I thought was kind of funny, was <laughs> how old is Mario in this? In, is he supposed to be in this? He looks like a grown man and he's living with his parents and a lot of other family members. And he and where he sleeps in his room, it looks like a 10 year old's room. He, I mean, he's playing video games, which I guess is g going along with this character arc, I guess. But <laughs> he, he literally has posters up in a room of like a 10 year old. Just my opinion on that. Let's now talk about the recommendation and uh, I guess see it. Uh, I think that's the easy answer. See it. Uh, I'm going to try a new rating system here and I'm going to call it the how many times would you be picking up your phone if you were at home? Because of course, you're not going to pick up your phone at the movies and interrupt the session of the people next to you. But I'd give it a three out of five, meaning that you'd probably pick up your phone three or five times, three out of five times during this movie. And you could scan Insta, scan Twitter or shop on Amazon and not really miss anything. So like if this on this rating system, if it was a zero, meaning you would just be engaged the whole movie. And if you did pick up your phone, you would probably miss something. This one's a three out of five, in my opinion. You could literally pick up the, your phone three times in this and you could easily get back into the story and not miss any plot points. Just my opinion on that. Now, I'm going to wrap this up with a question. What did you think of Chris Pratt's accent? Did it bother you? Did you think that it was cheesy or his lack of an accent? Let me know in the comments section on your favorite social media platform. As always, thank you for being a fan of the Movie Boss Podcast. Do all the podcasting stuff. Leave us a review on your favorite podcasting platform. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram. All those things will be in the description for this episode. But as always, thank you for listening and I will see you in the next one.